Hey, my program allies, my name is Marshall Marty, and welcome to part 11 of the C++ and SVL 2 the part for the show series. So this tutorial, we're going to get around to some exciting stuff. We're going to create a very basic collide function for the player class. Last tutorial, we loaded some text into our code, and then with that text file, I mean font file, we created some text and printed that text out onto the screen. Compile and run it quick second to see what we got here. So we got a blue snail who's just squiggling around on the screen. Anyway, so first thing we want to do, we, want, we can just comment this line out. So we haven't actually covered commenting in, in this tutorial at all, but anyways, do the comment, pretty easy, two forward slashes, and it comments out the line, and basically what the comment does is it does daily squat. It's just there for, for the user, for the programmer here to say, hey, that's a comment, this is telling me that this clears the screen. So compile and run it, quick second here, and we shouldn't have any white text on the screen. And there we go, yep, Mr. Blue Snail's taking the whole show to himself. Good to go. So now let's create the collide function in the player class. So scroll up into the player class. Here we go. And then right after void update, the update function, after that semicolon there ends, take out a few of those unneeded white spaces. Right after that, that curly brace ends, then type void up, uh, void collide, we're going to call it, because it is the collide function. Collide. And I have a feeling it's spelled wrong for whatever reason, but whatever. So open up some parentheses we're not going to give it any parameters for now open up some curly braces inside there we are going to basically just create a quick little if statement and this if statement is going to detect how far the x position is on the screen of the player so what we have to do is create an if statement open up some parentheses inside the parentheses we're going to run the test of if so it's saying if the in this case the test is the x position is greater than 100 this is just for a basic basic testing needs so whoops that's a less than sign there we go greater than 100 what's going to happen we'll open up some uh just yeah there we go that one i opened up like two opposite and one whatever so here's the test it's testing if your x position is greater than 100 well now here's the actual code that happens if the test happens to be true so the code we're going to run is we're just going to set the player's x velocity equal to zero so x velocity equals zero. Make sure you end that sucker with a semicolon. There we go. So you know while we're at it, we should make the screen size bigger because this is getting small and pathetic. So so scroll up to the top of your code and right here at that four hundred by this it's it's not working. So we gotta make the sucker bigger. Let's go with a eight hundred by eight hundred square for now. Give him to snail a little more playground room. So now if we hit compile and run, hopefully we can see a little bit better, bigger screen. Alright, so that's a bit more reasonably sized. Uh, let's make it a thousand width, because this is just a little bit of experimenting, because we do want a user experience that is feeling awesome. So now I compile and run, and we'll have a pretty awesome looking snail screen. Yep, uh, no, that was height that I made too big. So while we're at the top of the code, let's create some more variables. So the first variable we want to create is going to be an integer, and this is going to be half of the window height. So we can abbreviate this sucker here, because... I mean this is starting to get pretty long so half win height will work just fine we're gonna remember what that is i'm pretty sure because it is always good to be explicit with your variable so you don't forget what's what then you can just basically copy that sucker here i'm feeling kind of lazy don't want to type that out again i mean that's like eight characters that's just killer so add a forward slash or backslash we'll experiment so forward slash and then two so that's going to divide by two giving us half of the window height if you copy this on control c and paste it basically do the same except take out the height and replace that with width and we do want to spell right so we forget don't forget so like this has to be width i mean height all right so got that out of the way now there's not much more point to carrying on with the collide class anymore until we actually get something for it to collide into so this is basically just proving that we can collide with stuff we can collide with basically a little point on the screen so now let's actually create the block class so go to the top of the code, we can just pop out the top of the code so we remember where it is. So type class to create a class, there we go, class, and then we're going to name this here block class, or we should name it platform class, because I mean, there might be like a block of wood or something, so don't want to figure out what's what. So platform class, open up some curly braces, curly braces, give yourself a little space to work, tab, and then here we're going to say who's going to access this cast. So the reference type, well, basically, we're going to let this sucker be open to the public for now. So add a colon there, enter, and no, I do not like public being ta detabbed. Just preference, basically, but I don't really like public to be tabbed. So so for now, the platform class isn't going to look too much different from the player class. We're just going to copy out 
it's x and y positions uh, actually you know what we can copy these four values here control c which is its x and y position and velocity so paste all on there and now let's create a constructor to create a constructor type the name of the class one more time platform class be sure you spell it exactly the same way so it knows it's a constructor and basically the constructor runs as soon as the class is called so on the side of the class we can give it some initial values so we can set the x flaw value and actually inside here we're going to give it some parameters so the parameter up here we're going to give it is so open up some parentheses and the parameter we're going to give it is which we're going to give it its x position and its y position so those are going to be floats so float x position and y position so x pos comma and float and float y position y pos there we go so this here is two values that we're going to give it and that's basically where it is on the screen so inside the constructor here we're going to give these variables some initial values so for the y position and the x position y position we're going to set that equal to the x position and i have no idea what i just pressed but i don't think it was good add a quick semicolon to the dot control c and paste that there add a y replace that y and the most is best giving it some initial values so when are we going to give it these values we're going to give these values when we create the platform class so basically we're going to give it two parameters which is where it is on the screen so that'll be good to know good to go for now so saying we got an error hmm uh copy that there get that crap out of there and paste it into the constructor so now if we compile and run it hopefully error free i mean error is just a part of life it's like it's like eating ice cream ice cream is a part of life it's like eating potato chips so uh error free let's just get scooting across the screen but you can't get past this one point so basic collision detecting covered so far created the basic skeleton for a platform i hope you guys all enjoyed this tutorial if you guys have any questions or comments as well as c++ or sfml leave that down in the comment section be sure to leave a like before you leave if you guys help you out and you guys enjoy it do be sure to subscribe as well do you like my new haircut i'll be seeing you tomorrow or whenever tech news breaks Merge Marty out.